What I'd like to do today is to speak with you about the problem of bicycle injuries and wearing bicycle helmets. It's really the story of how we went about changing social norms and changing behavior to make helmet use an important part of bicycling. And the problem is still relevant today, as I'll talk with you about. In the next 15 minutes, I'll really summarize the last 20 years of research on this topic. So why bicycling? First of all, it's a really common um, activity. Three billion trips a year in the United States alone. Secondly, with 30% of adults and over 20% of children being obese, it's an important um, way to promote physical activity, increase fitness, and prevent obesity. I think we've also seen the problems due to burning of fossil fuels. The recent Hurricane Sandy, the rise in the level of the seas, um, threats to our coastal cities, have all driven home the problem that burning of fossil fuels is a major problem for the world. And bicycle is a way of transportation that doesn't really t um, burn fossil fuels and can be a, a source of activity as well. And finally, with our children spending up to seven hours a day interacting with electronic media, it's a way to get kids out of the house together as a family. But bicycling is not without its problems. Almost 800 people a year die from bicycling. 31,000 visit uh, or hospitalized for it, and 50 500,000 visit hospital emergency rooms for the treatment of bicycle-related injuries. Well, if you follow Sutton's law and go where the money is, a trillion head injuries. One-third of the emergency department visits, two-thirds of the hospitalizations, and three-quarters of the deaths are really due to brain injuries. And brain injuries are really important. Working in a trauma center for the last 30 years, we've come to realize that brain injuries are probably the most serious problem that we face. Most people that have moderate or severe brain injuries are left with lifelong disabilities, being not able to work, live independently, or have the kinds of lives that they really wanted for themselves and their families. The so-called minor brain injuries, concussions, are actually not so minor. While most people with these minor brain injuries get better within a week or two, many have problems that persist for long periods of time, for months. Problems such as memory loss, difficulty concentrating, headaches, fatigue, problems that really prevent them from going to school or working. And the cost of these um, traumatic brain injuries is enormous, $100 billion a year in the United States alone. What I think it's really important to understand is that despite all of our intensive care units, despite our MRIs and CT scans, beside, be, despite very talented neurosurgeons, we can't really do anything to heal the brain injury itself. It can prevent it from being worse while the persons are in the hospital, but we really can't do anything to heal it. So really the only way to um, deal with brain injuries is to prevent them. And of course, the, way, the best way to prevent them is through use of helmets. We did a series of studies published in high profile journals, the Journal of the American Medical Association, New England Journal of Medicine, and showed that helmets are really very effective. They prevent on the order of 85% of head injuries, 88% of brain injuries. And to put this into context, if you're in a motor vehicle crash wearing a seatbelt, the seatbelt really only prevents about 50% of risk of injury or death. We found that because of the overhang of the helmet over your face, it prevents about two-thirds of injuries to the upper part of the face. And helmets are also effective regardless of whether you're in a motor vehicle crash or just riding a fall off of, of your bike. So helmets are really very effective. So given the fact that bicycling is a very common activity, head injuries are serious and the most common serious problem we see with bicycling, and helmets are effective in preventing it, how can we go about and promote helmet use? How do we go about changing those social norms? So the first is product. We first began working on bicycle helmets. They were really nerdy looking. They were really dumb. Anybody who had a, a very few people wore them, those who wore them really looked like nerds. Well, this being America, this being capitalism, manufacturers responded. They ended up producing better looking helmets, better helmets, lighter helmets, and helmets that are more attractive. So we got away really from the nerd looking factor. Secondly was price. How do we make these more accessible to families that have a number of kids how do we get them into the hands of everyone, not just people that really can afford the high-end market? And the answer that we came up with initially was discount coupons. We worked with the manufacturers, 
the distributors and the retail outlets to each take a small cut in their profit. Our program did not assume the cost of this. Those three groups did. And they made more money. They made more money by selling more helmets. We as the scientists really created the market for them to um, sell bicycle helmets. As helmets became more common, the price dropped and the need for coupons really went away because now they're really available for 10 to $15. Place. We really wanted to get this out of just the um, bicycle shops, the specialty shops, and really get them in places where people shop. Targets, Kmart, Walmart, Fred Meyers, those kinds of places to, to make them very accessible to people. And finally was promotion. That was really key. And we went about it trying to get this information out to individuals in a variety of venues. The physician's offices, schools with the kids, supermarkets, radio, TV, newspapers. And one of the newspaper articles that we found to be most important was what we call the so-called victim stories. Your neighbor who was riding a bicycle and uh, was, was um, hit by a car but survived the crash without any injuries because they were wearing a helmet. Those victim stories in the local newspapers are really very, very powerful. And as a result of this, we really were very successful in increasing helmet use. Here we were back in 1986 when we did a survey and found out that 2% of people wore bicycle helmets. And here we are in 2010, 80% of people wearing helmets. We've seen the steady rise over time in, the, in helmet use. Really remarkable success story and really reflects this change in the norm that Back here, the norm was not to wear a helmet. Over here, the norm is to wear a helmet. This program served as a model for programs really around the country and even around the world. It's been a remarkably successful program, probably the most successful injury program we have had for kids. However, there are still problems. This was an article that was published a couple of months ago in the New York Times. And it says, to encourage bicycling, cities lose helmets. So this was an article where a woman went around to different cities around the world and saw bicycle riding, bike share programs. And the article unfortunately was filled with misstatements like this. Pushing helmets really kills cycling and bike sharing. It promotes a sense of danger that's not justified. Well, that's certainly not true. Bicycling for the most part is safe, but not always, not all the time. And in fact, part of the problem is that European cities, particularly those in Northern Europe, UK, um, Netherlands, they have a wide, um, wide bicycling programs there, but the use of helmets is really pretty negligible. So what are the problems that we're facing right now? Well, one is the whole issue of bike sharing programs. This is a map of bike sharing programs in North America. Um, as of May 2012, there were bicycle sharing programs in 30 North American cities, actually 185 cities around the world. And bike sharing programs you're really familiar with. They're programs where you can go different kiosks around the city, pick up a bicycle, ride it, and then deposit somewhere else, really at pretty minimal cost. Cities love these programs because they help get um, people out of their cars, they help to reduce traffic congestion and the pollution that comes with it, and actually make greater use of public transportation because people might take trans public transportation from their house to the, um, some doors downtown, and then get a bike share, use that to go to their office. But the um, problems with it are, how do you make helmets accessible at the point where you rent the bicycles? There are more than 18 bike sharing programs also being planned, including one here, oh, it's not up there, one in Seattle. We know the largest one that's being planned is in New York City. And they're really facing this task of how do you get helmets in their hands? Well, a group of bright students at MIT in their product engineering design class in 2010 took this on as a project. Their, pro their, their goal was, their, their charge was to develop a way, some kind of device that would solve this problem of bike sharing programs, and they were successful. First, I wanna show you this slide, which shows the need for the bike sharing programs, um, the need for helmets for bike sharing programs. You can see here, this is a study, observational study in Washington, D.C. last year, and it showed that people who use bike sharing programs here in blue have a much lower rate of helmet use than our commuters or casual riders riding their own bicycles. This is what the MIT students came up with. 
It's a kiosk that can dispense helmets, but it also can accept them back after they've been used. And as a result of that, when you return them, you get back most of your deposit. These helmets are then sanitized and recycled and can be used again elsewhere. And these kind of kiosks now can be spread really throughout the city. They have set up 20 of these in Boston, and the plans are to set up another 500 across the country the next year. I think this is the answer for our bike share programs in our city and other cities around the country should really consider this. So I want to end with this story in this helmet. This is a helmet that somebody sent me. And this person was hit by a car. He suffered some broken bones, but he did not suffer a head injury because his helmet protected them. His helmet really saved his brain. So we can do good, we can change behavior, and in the process we can save lives and protect brains. Thank you.